Happy New Year. I hope no one is surprised to hear me say Happy New Year in December. For the secular calendar, the new year begins on the 1st of January. But for the liturgical calendar, for the liturgical year, the year of the church, the new year begins on the first Sunday of Advent, like we have today. The liturgical year is centered on Christ. The liturgical year tells the story of Jesus Christ. In telling the story of a person, it is common to follow a logical or chronological sequence, mostly beginning with when the person was born, or at other times, beginning with the events that led to the birth of the person. And so now, in telling the story of Jesus Christ, the liturgical year begins with the events leading to the birth of Christ. This liturgical year is year A for Sunday, and it is year two for weekdays. For Sundays, we have three years, year A, year B, and year C, while for weekdays, we have year one and year two. So for this liturgical year, we are in year A for Sunday, and we are in year two for weekdays. The liturgical year begins with Advent. And the word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means arrival or coming. And so, the season of Advent is the season where we reflect on the coming or the arrival of Jesus Christ at Christmas. But it does not stop with that. The arrival of Jesus, the coming of Jesus here is seen in three senses, from three points of view. The first one we call the first arrival. The second one, the second arrival or the final arrival. And the third one is called the third arrival. The third arrival comes between the first and the second, which is the last. For the first arrival, we commemorate the incarnation, the mystery of the incarnation, the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. For the second arrival, we prepare for the second coming of Jesus, which is also the final or the last coming of Jesus. At the first coming of Jesus, he came as our Savior. For the second coming, he will come as our judge. The outcome of this judgment will be determined by what happens between the first coming and the last coming. And in between the first and the last, we have the third coming. The third coming of Jesus is the everyday coming of Jesus to us. Jesus comes to us through the Word of God, through the Bible. Jesus comes to us through the seven sacraments. Jesus comes to us through his ministers. Jesus comes to us through our neighbors. Jesus comes to us through the daily events of our lives. And finally, Jesus comes to us through our individual deaths. Now we are in the season of Advent. Watch out. Very soon, people will become busy. And those who are already busy are going to double or triple the level at which they are busy. The rush of the season tends to overshadow the reason for the season. A lot of interest will be on sales, on commercials. And just a few hours ago, many were out there in the cold, 
Many were out there in the rain trying to take advantage of Black Friday sales. And now many are celebrating and rejoicing because they got great deals. But guess what? In days to come, weeks, months, and years to come, the same great materials they got from the sales will find their way under or at the bottom of some drawers, at the back of some closets, some even in the trash can. And for the very lucky ones, they will be part of the next garage sales. None of them will be permanent. We have three comings, three arrivals, the first, the second, and the third. For the first one, we know it, had, it had already happened in Bethlehem at Christmas. The third one happens every day, every moment. But the second one, which is the last one, we do not know when it will happen. Even Jesus himself said, the Son of Man does not know, no one knows, only the Father knows. But today's gospel passage gives us a clue regarding how it will happen, even though we don't know when. The gospel passage says, it is going to happen like in the days of Noah, when people were eating and drinking, people were marrying, people were given in marriage, and then it happened by surprise, when no one expected. The same gospel passage goes on to say that two men will be in the field, one will be taken, one will be left. Two women will be grinding on the meal. One will be taken, one will be left. Have you noticed that they were all doing the same thing, or rather they will all be doing the same thing, and one will be taken? It is not that one will be in the field and one will be in the church. It is not that one will be grinding and one will be praying. No. They will all be doing the same thing, but one will be taken and one will be left. And so what is the criteria here? Or what is the message here? That it goes beyond the physical, the inner disposition, the intention, the motivation will also count when it comes to the final judgment. And so the fact that all of us are here at Mass does not mean that if the final coming happens now, that everybody automatically will be taken up. It goes beyond the physical. God will look at our intentions, our dispositions, and our motivations. Now that we are at Mass, what judgment am I passing on the brother sitting by my left, the sister sitting by my right? What are the rest of my plans for today? What fruits am I bearing in my family and even outside of my family? All these will come together to determine whether we are going to be taken up or whether we are going to be left here. In his book titled, If You Preach It, They Will Come, Father Saman Diego tells a story which he got from Henry Nowen in his book, Clowning in Rome. The story tells about a young boy who walked into a sculptor who was chiseling a big marble, a very large marble, and all the boy saw was the chiseling. He had no idea what was going on, and after a moment, he left. A few weeks later, the boy returned to the same place and discovered that in place of the large marble was a big lion. And so he asked the sculptor, Sir, please tell me, how did you know that a lion was hiding inside the marble? And then the sculptor smiled and said, To start with, I spent some time sitting and looking at the marble. I spent a long time in reflection. And while I was reflecting, I discovered that there is a lion in my heart. And it was a lion in my heart 
that recognized the lion that was entrapped in the large marble. And so all I needed to do was to chisel out whatever was not part of the lion. And so the lion came out. My dearly beloved in Christ, the book of Genesis tells us that we have all been created in the image and the likeness of God. So whether you like it or not, there is a piece of God hidden in each and every one of us. And so the season of Advent affords us the opportunity to pray more and to reflect so as to allow the Christ that is hidden in us to discover the Christ that is entrapped in our neighbors, entrapped in all the creatures of God and in all the events of life, begging to be released. At this Mass, the candidates preparing for the sacraments of Christian initiation are welcomed. Beginning from today, we'll continue to help them as they pray and they reflect. And this period will be meant for them to allow the Christ that is hidden in them to discover the Christ that is hidden in the sacraments. As we continue on our journey through life, we all seek happiness. We seek joy. We seek peace. But many times we go running around looking for peace. Many times we travel distance looking for peace. But the truth of the matter is, God has already put it in us. He only wants us to take time and discover that peace in us and in our nearest and in our dearest. The Apostle Paul, at a point, was going around looking for this inner joy and peace. But after his conversion, he made the confession that I now count as rubbish all the things that mattered to me before because he had chiseled them all out and because of the joy he has found in Christ. St. Augustine made a similar confession. After his conversion, he realized the things that were unnecessary. He chiseled them all away, and he said, You have created us unto yourself, O Lord, and so our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And so, my dearly beloved in Christ, as we begin this journey in this new year, I pray for you as I pray for myself, that the Spirit of God may enlighten us to make the same realization so as to find a true peace, true joy, and true happiness, both in this life and in the life to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen.